it is Monday, October 29th, and I don't have a lot to say except how on earth did I cram all this into a little 10 by 10 room. Holy moly. It's going to look worse before it looks better. Yes. And I am finding some more things to purge I'm not going to use. So that's a thing. Good morning everybody. It is 8.56 a.m. Tuesday, October 31st. I only know that because it's Halloween. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm out running a couple of errands quickly. I ended up running a couple errands late last night and I didn't enjoy driving. I don't enjoy driving in traffic anymore. I just don't have the patience for it for whatever reason um, and although we've moved to a quieter more peaceful area of the country you know people still have to commute home from work so there is traffic granted it's not as bad as it was in San Jose but it's not pleasant so anyway and then you combine that with um, yet more epic problems with Lowe's so y'all know by now um, my problem with getting the floor installed in our room from Lowe's. And if you don't, here's a brief synopsis. So when we first moved in within a couple of days, um, which was in the beginning of September, we got here, I think, September 6th um, or 7th. So by that Saturday, we went to Lowe's and ordered the flooring for the art room. They said, okay, four to six weeks um, and your, our, your floor should be in. Um, yeah, it took a lot longer than that um, to not only get the product, but to get it installed. They said when we ordered it, it probably is going to be like three to four weeks. It's, it shouldn't be longer than that. That was longer than that. <sighs> anyway, um, there was just one problem after the other and one communication failure after the other. And we got no help from anybody at the store. We were waiting on one little piece of trim. It's literally Halloween. It's been just about two months. I just got the floor put in. Um, you not only couldn't get a hold of anybody at the store, but you couldn't get a straight answer out of anybody. That should have been enough for me to just not go shopping there. And I don't blame it on Lowe's Corporate. I blame it on the manager of that store. Um, Anyway, it wasn't enough for me, evidently, because I did an online order last yesterday morning for something I needed for the new art room now that the floor is in. And, um... In half a mile, turn left onto southwest to Allerton Sherwood Road. Thank you, Jean. Red light camera reported ahead. Um, anyway, um, that should have been enough for me with the floor, but it wasn't. So I ordered some pieces I needed for the new art room, and... Um, I ordered them in the morning. They usually pick them that day sometime and you go and pick them up late in the afternoon or the next day. So I did that and not only had they not bothered to pull my order or any one of the couple dozen that I saw laying on the desk, um, but it took them an hour, an hour people, to tell me they didn't have it. An hour. 
I'm not going there again. Turn left onto Southwest to Allerton Sherwood Road. When they found they didn't have it on the shelf, they should have come out and told me and within a few minutes, look, we can't find it. We will, um, you know, call you. We'll go see if we can find it. They didn't do any of that. They just let me wait, left me waiting in the front lobby. So that's a problem. <sighs> anyway, I went to Home Depot, picked up essentially the same thing and got it fixed. Took me five minutes. Um, in a quarter of a mile. Turn right on to Southwest Langer Farms Parkway. But anyway, um, it should not have taken that long. I was out trying to run errands late last night, like for an hour and a half that should have only taken 20 minutes. And yeah, anyway, I wasn't a happy camper. So I am out doing some errands today and in the wrong lane. I'm trying to get them done. Turn right on to Southwest I, Langer Farms Parkway. Then turn left. Thank you, Jeeves. Um, because I'm just not, yeah, I'm not okay with doing them late at night, much less being frustrated by Lowe's. Lowe's, I'm not shopping at Lowe's again. I'm just, I'm kind of done with that. I, yeah, I just can't do it anymore. So, Home Depot, you now have my business. And I am in the wrong place. Crap. This is the clean air place. <laughs> I've been here. This is DQ station. Crap. Okay. So let's turn around. Anyway, so <clears throat> I need a couple more things for the art room. I'm probably 90% unpacked. I'm to the point where I need to hang shelves up. I need to build one more cube shelf for books and things and um, then start labeling things. So I'm, I'm almost there, almost. Um, but I'm going to go hit up Walmart and pick up a couple more things and I'm going to go to Safeway. We need groceries. So that's what's on the agenda today. And then more unpacking of the art room. This guy behind, next to me is like trying to... I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. So I wanted to clarify. Yeah, my problem with Lowe's wasn't that it took so long, although I wasn't happy about that. It was the distinct lack of communication with me about said a length of time that it was taking and why it was taking so long and to the point where I had to call the corporate office to find out a piece of trim was on back order. Um, I had to literally call every day to get the installers to call me back. Like it was just a huge communication issue, not to mention that the Tigard Lowe's, sorry, I do live in Tigard now, Tigard Lowe's, um, has a serious understaffing problem. And it's not Tigard, it's Tigard. I'm still learning. Anyway, um, so I'll be going to Home Depot. But now we're going to venture into Walmart. I don't think I've been to the Walmart up here since we moved. Walmart's generally not my favorite place, but if the hardware store situation's anything to go by, then who am I to judge? I might be pleasantly surprised. We'll find out. I'll be back. So I just wanted to show you all. I was, the you know, since I got back from the Myrtle Beach retreat, I've been unpacking the art supplies finally and setting up the art room, which you all know by now because I've said it like a million times. Um, I sat down yesterday and was unpacking all the alcohol inks, a couple of which had exploded in shipment. But um, thankfully, we thought ahead to like individually package each little bottle of ink. Yes, I know. Like each little bottle had its own teeny tiny plastic bag. Um, <laughs> when I went to go buy the bags at a specialty plastic shop in California, um, for those of you who, some of you won't get the reference, some of you will, but they look like I was buying like 200 dime bags. Like, you know, because I don't do that, but that's what it looked like. Anyway, as I was unpacking the ink yesterday, despite the fact that the building was mostly dry, I still have... Can y'all see that? <laughs> this just doesn't want to come off. I'm going to try when I get home a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. I don't know if that's going to help, but anyway. All right. The one thing that I really wanted at Walmart, they didn't have, of course. So we're going to head to the office supply store. Maybe they'll have something that'll work. Um, if not, I'm going to maybe have my cousin pick me up one at a Walmart in California. I hate to do that, but I might send a picture of it to my daughter. She lives a couple towns over. Maybe have her go to the Walmart by her and see if she can find one. I don't know. 
Anyway, we're still not running errands. I'll be One back. One thing I want to mention when you are doing something like what we've done and moved um, anywhere, be it a big move or a little move, I, as you all know by now, get lost everywhere. Um, I use a navigation app. You have heard me refer to him as Jeeves. It is not part of my car. It's actually on my phone. I use the navigation app Waze, W-A-Z-E, not sponsored. Um, it not only has constantly updated maps, but it also have, has road and traffic conditions. So I like that because Jeeves will automatically reroute you around things or give you alternatives if you don't want to go on the freeway. Um, there are um, <coughs> options for voice. Um, and um, male or female, different accents, with or without street names. I do it with the street names. You've heard him talk. Um, without Jeeves, I wouldn't be nearly as brave going out and exploring my new neighborhood. That just wouldn't happen. So I recommend for all of you, um, when you do do something like this, download a navigation app. I really do. Again, I am a big fan of Waze. Um, Google, Google Maps is also good, but I'm a bigger fan of Waze than I am Google Maps. So, that being said, maybe you have a favorite um, navigation app that you use uh, on your phone. Put it in the description so that everybody can check it out. Um, my car generally also still does have a Thomas Guide. For those of you who are my age, you know what that is. Um, you young people will have no idea. Look it up. Google it. Use the Google. All right, we are headed to Office Depot. I have not been to that store yet up here. I've been to the Staples and was very underwhelmed. So let's go check out Office Depot. Okay, so if I was underwhelmed by Staples, what's less than that? Because that would be Office Depot. <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised because I wasn't crazy about the Office Depot by our old house. And so anyway, yeah. Um, if you guys know of a really good office supply store, um, preferably if you even know a really great mom and pop, that would be even better. In fact, I'm going to be looking for mom and pop, um, stores, businesses to frequent in the Tigard, Oregon area going forward. So if you know of really good ones, either small chains or, or like I said, mom and pops, let me know. Leave their names and information in the description below, or I'm sorry, in the comments below. And uh, yeah, support your local mom and pops. All right, so now we're gonna just head to Safeway because I didn't find what I needed and I think I'm gonna just wait until my husband and I go to Ikea. We are going to get a desk for him to go in the art room because he likes to work on miniatures and things and he's gonna get a desk in the corner. The room's plenty big enough. Um, I just told him it has to be white, I know that, or gray. Um, he can't just get like dark cherry because, yeah, I'm not okay with that. It is still the art room. <laughs> so we're going to go to Ikea for that, I think. And um, when we do that, I want to get a mat to go under my chair and his chair that'll be in there too. So, yeah, anyway. All right, that's it. I'll be back. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, November 1st, 9.45 a.m. Don't get excited. I only know that because I looked it up already. <laughs> um, when I first got up, I had no idea what day of the week it was. But anyway, that's par for the course for me. Um, I posted today's thoughts in my Facebook group that I, wasn't sh that I had some stuff for donation after putting most of the art room back together. And I wasn't sure if... Um, I was going to do the donation today or maybe I was going to wait and do it over the weekend with my husband. I went and took a shower and thought about it. I'm going to just go do it today. It's not that far from the house and it's right off of 99. So I'm going to go do it this morning and um, you can see behind me we've got boxes of things back here. Mostly like storage containers and things I didn't want to purge before we moved because I wasn't sure what I was going to need to be honest. Um, what else? I don't know. We're going to go do this and we'll see how difficult it is or is not. Um, there is a store here in the neighborhood called Value Village. Um, Value Village is part of 
the um, retail chain that also owns Savers. In California, we had Savers Thrift Store, and here in Oregon, we have Value Village. I believe all of them support Hope Services. I am not sure at this this exact moment, but I believe they all support Hope Services. I'll try to link their website in the description below. They are a pretty large chain of thrift shops, and generally speaking, you can get kind of a good bargain there. They're not necessarily the cleanest places. It's a thrift shop, so, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I like that it goes to a good charity, and they seem to be less about, you know, making a profit um, and more about helping people, unlike some other chains. So, um, anyway, yeah, let's go get that done, and I'll be back. Okay, so that was easy. The donation um, is around the back, just like it was at the old Goodwill by my old house. Sorry, utility truck. Uh, anyway, and the Value Village is right next door to a woodworking um, supply shop. They have, it says, it's called Woodcraft. Woodworking tools, books, and supplies. I don't do woodworking, but that's interesting. The husband might want to come back. We're gonna head into Savers. I'll be right Savers, back. Savers, Value Village. Same chain, different store. was quick and easy um, I went in and looked around I got a little bit of footage um, if you're watching this you've seen that I was trying to be discreet so yeah but it's a pretty big store lots of clothing but they do have a lot of other items I did get one thing I got a pot it was $4.99 why did I buy a pot so I want to do more eco printing which if you've been following my um, moving diaries and vlogs you know I've did a little bit of experimenting while I with what I could reach uh, basically trying it with an iron and while it worked okay I don't think I had the iron on there long enough and didn't get hot enough I do want to try boiling which I'm not using my kitchen pots for which is why I bought the pot I do have a saucepan that I also got at a thrift store I think I also got at Savers for two bucks and I use that for boiling plant material and making homemade inks and things. But I wanted something that's bigger that I could boil papers in, small papers. I don't need anything super huge, but so I got that pot. That'll work. And um, yeah, I don't advise if you're going to boil plant material and use it to make dyes or dye paper to, for your art supplies that you use your kitchen pots. You don't know. Um, you don't know what that's going to do as far as. Um, to your kitchen pot if it's going to stain it um, if it's what materials are poisonous or not um, And aren't fit for human consumption. I don't advise it. It's a foolish idea use um, Go get go to the thrift shop spend, you know, two dollars or three dollars go get a pot um, I don't have anything else to do out of the house. Yay. So I'm gonna go home I'm going to maybe make one more cup of coffee and edit video because I have three weeks of like moving diaries and vlog to edit. Some of which is from the NPR conference, some is from the Myrtle Beach Art Retreat. I also need to share my pictures and video with the other teachers, which I haven't done yet. Shh, don't tell them. I'm gonna do it today. <laughs> Um, and there's one video tutorial I filmed while I was at the retreat. I don't think the camera angle is super great, um, but I was able to film it and I will do a voiceover. And that's on my camera camera. So, and I need to check the camera and make sure it made it through traveling fine without getting broken. I don't generally bring my video camera with me. I film with my phone, which I'm doing now. Um, because there's just too much of a chance of it getting broken with through going through TSA or something. So anyway, let's go home now.
enough to do like a whole video on it, but I just wanted to quickly go over um, how I label my art room and I did it in the old house. I've always done it this way. I use my brother P-Touch um, to make my labels and you can make them any way. You don't have a label maker. You could write them by hand on label paper. Um, you could do them on the computer. You could hand write them on masking tape. Use what you have. I happen to have one of these from my old job so I use it and it's really great. Um, not only do they stick really well, but um, they're not, um, when you peel, I won't say they're not permanent, they are, but when you peel them off, they don't leave a residue. So I love this for what I use it for. I use, um, what I stick the labels to, I cut out of these dollar store chopping mats. You get a package of two of them for a dollar from Dollar Tree. I do know they have something similar on Amazon, and I think, you know, a lot of different kinds of dollar stores across the country have something similar. So um, look, look around and see what you have. Um, they're very thin plastic. I will link the Amazon ones um, in the video description and, and all the materials I'm talking about. Um, they have them in clear, but they also have colored ones, which I use for my et um, Etsy store inventory to make dividers. They work for a lot of different things. Let me show you our closet. And I use the colored ones as dividers between the Etsy store inventory. It makes it really easy to find the different products when you all place an order. Um, the colored ones are easier to see quickly than the clear ones. Um, so again, I'll link them in the description below. I cut them into pieces that are about four inches long by one inch tall. I just use a plain old paper trimmer, either this one or if I feel like digging it out, um, my other, um, it's not a rotary trimmer. It's a other Fiskars trimmer, you know, the one with the little orange slidey thing. I, you know, it's been a long day and a long week, couple of weeks. I can't think of what it's called. Um, anyway, so then I cut them about like this. Then I take a regular hole punch and I punch one hole in each end. This is, again, this is just a hole punch from the dollar tree. Um, I use a pair of uh, wire cutters and these little mini cable ties, which again are from Amazon. I'll link them in the description below. And I use these to label my baskets. I love that to use baskets to hold things on my shelves. It makes it neater and cleaner um, and less chaotic appearing. Um, and things are clean and organized if I put a label on the end and I can tell quickly without digging in the basket what's in it. Um, I use Y weave baskets from Target for the most part. I'm in this small size. Before I discovered the small cable ties, I used to use string to attach my labels. But this is what it looks like when it's all done. This is the small one and they also have this medium size, which no longer has, what does that say, cotton fabrics in it. I just left the label, but I put them somewhere else. And then this really big tall one, which fits, if you have cube shelving, this fits in the cube shelving really well. Um, and they're all neatly on the end. I'm gonna swing you around here, and hopefully not too fast. Um, it's towards the end of the day and I don't have all my new lighting and yet I need to get some more lamps, taller ones because yeah, anyway. Um, so either why on the wire shelves um, here, I have bins and baskets. I have a cute couple clear bins. I'm gonna keep using them. They're a little bit taller and a little thicker to hold my artist paints. I do have a lot of fine art paints. So anyway, um, they fit really nicely on the shelf and they look really nice. I have lots of these different kinds of white drawer storage things from Michael's and I, I label those too because if it's away in the drawer, if I don't have a label, I don't know what's in there. And, you know, I have a bunch of the little drawers, medium drawers, and then these big, they're all labeled. Even the sewing stuff over here in the corner, I, I didn't think I'd get to that today, but actually I didn't. I got it all labeled. There's the woods out, out the window. Um, and then my... Um, ephemera and small bits bank. Um, these shelves will go up here on the top and then these things that are kind of sitting out in front will go up on those shelves and everything's labeled. It's I just need my husband hang the shelves up for me and then we're all ready to go. 
So that's how I label my supplies. Um, if you want more specifics for categories, I can maybe do that. Um, but you really need to work with what you have in your art room and in the way of supplies and what you like working with um, to come up with the categories that are going to work for you. One of the new things I'm doing here in the new art room is I have muffin tins actually from the dollar store. And I can take my muffin tin and I can go over to the small bits bank. I can pull a bunch of bits that look interesting to work with and I can have them over here at the table rather than walking back and forth to the wall because I'm lazy that way. <laughs> and there's my little inspiration corner. There's paintings all over the house. You can see some out there in the hallway. Over there, there's the computer. One of my carts that's set up for art journaling and my, e my easel and a canvas I need to start on and uh, my iPod dock. Yes, I still have an iPod dock, I know. Um, and then that cart is set up for painting. Um, so yeah, and then here in this blank corner, my husband's gonna get a desk. He actually likes to work on miniatures. So we're gonna um, put a desk over there for him, hopefully soon. Anyway, that's it for the moment, I'll be back. <music> Hi guys, it is Friday morning, um, November 2nd maybe, <laughs> 9 16 a.m. I only know the time because I'm sitting here in the car looking at the clock. Um, we are headed out this morning. I am going over to Harbor Freight to pick up some lighting for the art room and I am going to share with you all what I'm getting and why I'm getting it. Um, and also um, cabinetry that I've gotten for the art room, some of which I had already. I just got more. I'm doing it, really doing it on a budget. And um, I want to share with you all what um, I'm getting because there, you could of course go really expensively, but I'm choosing not to do that. We're still paying two mortgages, so I need to save some money where we can. Um, the Y weave baskets I spoke about yesterday are um, more expensive than something that you could find at the dollar store or Daiso if you have a Japanese dollar store near you, but they are well worth it because they're a little thicker and they last longer and they don't crack as easy. Um, so, and then by also by contrast, the dollar store cutting boards I used to cut up to make the labels are well worth it because they're inexpensive yet thick enough to work well for what I use them for. So spend your dollars wisely when you're doing this. So we're going to, after much research, go get some clamp lights from Harbor Freight and some daylight bulbs because they will work very well for a couple of dark corners in the new art room that we have. And then we're going to do a test um, shoot on the new art table, which is underneath the ceiling fan in that room, which is an LED light. So we'll be testing the lighting out there and the colors, and I'll be asking you all what you think. So let's head out, and I'll be back. So I got these industrial-looking clamp lights from Harbor Freight Tools. They're $7.99 each. I already had some 5,000 Kelvin daylight fluorescent bulbs. So... This is the area where my easel is before, and I have no lights in here on. Let me get this up there at the top of the easel and plug it in and let's see after. That's with the light on, but no other lights on. That's a big improvement already. There's a little bit of a shine right there, but I'm not normally gonna be painting in the dark with no other lights on in the room. So let's see what happens with the other lights on and also if I move it up a little bit. Yep, that solved that problem. And I have the blinds closed right now, but if I open them, it would be even better. Look, a lot less of a dark hole than it was. Okay, so you can see already there's some shadows right here. All we have right now is the overhead uh, light from the LED light from the ceiling fan. The colors look pretty good. Let's put on the 
a spare clamp light and see what happens. I'm trying putting the clamp light in different spots to see what I like better. So far, I haven't figured it out yet. From what I can see, it looks okay. Cut some of the uh, junk off my table. I'm not quite done putting things away yet. I need to work on this. I'm gonna switch to the HD camera and see what that looks like. Okay, that's with just the ceiling fan on the HD camera and not my telephone. The other was my telephone, which isn't bad. You do get a little bit of a reflection here, but that's um, not any worse than the old studio, to be honest, in California, which we had always like a reflection from one of my overhead lights. Let me turn on the clamp light. And it's slightly brighter, but I think it's okay either way. What do you all think? Let me know. I'm going to work on this a little bit, and I'm going to speed through it. I'm, gonna, I'm just catching up my traveler's notebook from my, travel, my traveling that I've done lately. And you all can watch and let me know uh, what you think. This is with the overhead LED ceiling fan and the clamp light on, which has a daylight bulb in it. Uh, and yeah, let's see. Let me know what you think.
pilot. Today we got, where is it? My husband's desk put in here so he can work on his car um, models and miniatures. And yeah, we still have all these shelves behind me. I'm not sure you can see to hang up tomorrow. Anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you've all had a great one. And uh, yeah, the holidays are coming up quick. So remember to take a deep breath and not to get too crazy about it. <laughs> I'll try to take my own advice. And go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you all deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.